Welcome to our Thursday game. But as you can see, uh, we are missing Steven today, and we are going to push back our finale of D&D 5e Lost Mind of Fandelver to next weekend. And that is because Steven is in Texas and one of the parts of Texas that's been affected with uh, power outages. So uh, we're going to push back the finale by one week because I, I really want to need him here for the finale. I don't want to, you know, I'm, I'm sure you guys are probably in agreement as well to where we'd rather like to have the whole crew here instead of missing one. So, but we will have the finale. I'm, I'm looking forward to the finale and boy, do I have a fun finale planned for you guys next week. So, all right. So we're going to, we're going to hang out with you guys until uh, four o'clock or five o'clock. What is it? Five, we'll hang out till four o'clock. What is it now? Three o'clock over there. Anyways, too many time zones to worry about, but we'll be hanging out with you guys for about the next 45 minutes or so. Uh, on Friday of last week, uh, I was having some issues with the Savage Worlds Adventure Edition rule set. It was not the actual rule set itself, so if you are watching, uh, my apologies on that. And that was actually the campaign that I had was corrupted because I basically just copy and pasted all of my campaigns from Classic into Unity when I made the transition a long time ago. So uh, I was having some issues with that. Uh, the guy stayed over. We figured out it was a, a bad campaign. And we're going to hang out and talk about some Savage Worlds because it looks like uh, that is going to be the next game that we are going to be playing here uh, on the uh, Fantasy Grounds Twitch channel. And I guess, uh, Josh, you're going to be running the Savage Worlds game? Yeah, I'll, I'm going to run it. Awesome. Have you been doing any kind of brainstorming on thinking or thinking about it yet? Uh, yeah, I actually, uh, uh, yeah, and it's uh, completely up to uh, you guys too. I mean, what we decide to play on. Uh, but I was thinking we should either go with classic and do like Deadlands, uh, or we should do the new uh, Flash Gordon. Oh, that would be cool too. Yeah, I think that we should either you know bring back the uh, that that kind of iconic. Uh, which Deadlands is for Savage Worlds, right? Or yeah. uh, we should showcase the new one that just came out. Yeah, I'm up for either. Uh, I've played Savage Worlds Deadlands. I love Deadlands. It's a it's a great setting. It's a very it's a very well supported setting as well. They're always putting out content for that. Uh, Flash Gordon was a Kickstarter from what a couple of years ago, I think. And uh, I didn't back it uh, because I, I just kind of, I had to cut down on Kickstarters. I was doing way too many. And, uh, but it looked good too. I've always been a Flash Gordon fan, especially the old black and white uh, Flash Gordon movies where you can see the spaceships on the string and stuff kind of flying through this on the screen and everything. So yeah. I'm, I'm up for whatever. Joe, Derek, what do you think? I'm good. I don't remember Flash Gordon much. I remember watching it as a kid when the movie came out, but I don't. I remember the song in my head, but I... the, oh, Queen the Queen song. song? Queen. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love, this is one of my favorite Queen songs, and my mom's a huge Queen fan, and my mom can't stand that song. So basically, it's like a weird mix of like sword and sorcery and technology, but the technology is very um, uh, kind of time dependent. It's like era dependent. So it's all like rocket ships. It's not like advanced kind of uh, what we would think of as like high tech. Uh, but there's like lasers and heat rays and all kinds of different stuff. But it's not uh, it's not overly. Um, it's kind of like um, it, it, if you want like a New Hope, Star Wars: A New Hope, where it's a very kind of used universe. Yeah. I have to watch the movie again. Uh, well, it originally came from. It's, it's much older than the movie that molded, uh, but it's from like the turn of the century. Uh, and there was like tons of like comic books and uh, actual novels too, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. I used to have a bunch of Flash Gordon comic books as a kid. Can't hear you, Dave. Oh, this is this is killing me. I got I got to figure this issue out with uh, targeting and keeping it highlighted. But uh, yeah, I I had some comic books as a kid. My my dad was a big sci-fi geek. So he's the one that got me into like Lord of the Rings and Star Trek and all that stuff. And he was telling me that Flash Gordon pretty much started it all for the most part. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's in fact the when George Lucas was uh, coming up with the idea of Star Wars, he was really based a lot of it off of Flash Gordon. He wanted that uh, that space opera. Yeah. Oh, it definitely is. Yeah, for sure. You know, just it was it was it was so plain. You know, like you mentioned, A New Hope. It was very. But then again, that was. But it was cutting edge, man. All that stuff that they were doing with ships with the, the spark. Remember, the, they'd put the sparklers on the end. And sometimes the ship would actually, the tail of the ship would be on fire when they were, because of the sparkler. It was crazy, man. But it was very low budget. We would call it low budget now. But back then, man, in the early night, it was what, the teens and the 20s when they were when they were putting those out? Oh, man, that was like cutting edge, man. Was... But you could see the strings on the ships and stuff. It was so awesome. Makes <laughs> <laughs> it makes me want to go back and watch them now. I bet you could probably. I I think they're open source. I think you can go to archive.org, and I think you can watch a bunch of those on archive.org for free, with like the old Bella Lagosa stuff and you know yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. He would have been awesome as Flash Gordon. No, I don't know. Maybe not. But. Uh, I think he would have been a better Ming. Better Ming, for sure. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, for Ming sure. The Merciless. Yeah. I just like the way that he looked, Ming. I, I liked his his whole look. That was that was yeah. good. All right, so Savage Worlds, uh we're gonna we're gonna goof around and check out some of the the features of you know in the automation of Savage Worlds. So what do you guys wanna do first? You guys made a couple characters, right? I, I see you guys made a Brightwing Chuck, <laughs> Manly Hands, <laughs> and Skippy McDougal. <laughs> nice. Uh, uh, it's always nice to see what you guys are coming up with. So, all right. <laughs> so we'll we'll add you guys into the the combat tracker, and we'll just kind of take a a quick look at the character sheet starting with the the main tab of course this has all the drag and drop capabilities from you know your races your edges your hindrances skills etc you know you you put in your races uh, you can do anything here so you can drag and drop like I said, edges, if there's something that you want to drag and drop on, there's plenty of edges in the Suede Adventure Book. And then there's also, I'm sure if we decide to play Flash Gordon, then there will be specific edges for that setting. And the Flash Gordon setting will also say, okay, from the Suede Core Rulebook, you'll omit these powers. And, you know, I know Deadlands does that as well, and along with the other uh, Suede uh, genres, so... But yeah, everything has drag and drop capability. Uh, I'm going to make a character too so I don't mess up Brightwing Chuck that I'm looking at. So yeah, as you can see, you know, I'm just taking some edges and hindrances and just kind of dra dragging and dropping them on there. So we'll go into the hindrances. So it does have that automation, which is, uh, which is really nice. And then we can go into the, the races sidebar. Uh, I like the... We'll see. I like the Saurian. Saurian's the, uh, I'll just drag and drop that onto the race. So, as you can see, it adds everything as well. Aki has done a great job to where even when you add a race, it adds all of the abilities that you get for that race. So you can see when I added Saurian, it gave him armor plus two, bite, uh, environmental weakness, keen senses, and the outsider, which is a, a minor. I believe that's a hindrance. So, but yeah, I mean, it has all the, you know, drag and drop abilities. So the next tab is your traits. This is where uh, a lot of the magic actually happens. Uh, your attributes, they, they all start at a base of D4. They go up to a maximum of D12 plus up to three or four, I think. Uh, your derive stats uh, are sort of like your, your pace, which is your movement. Uh, you can move six squares. And then you can also do a run die. So your run die is attached as well. And also in the lower left-hand portion of the interface as well. So if you're going to do, if you say, okay, I'm going to take a run action, you would run your six and then you would roll a D6 for the extra squares that you would get to move. Parry, that's basically equivalent to your armor class. Uh, here's your size for your character. Uh, and then your toughness, which is like a mitigation all armor 
uh, or if you have like a uh, maybe a power or if you have some type of magical uh, item or something could give you a higher toughness so as you can see on this uh, character sheet that I have uh, it says there's a toughness of six that would get mean that if I took eight damage, then six of it would be negated, basically. So I wouldn't take any damage. So, all right, to the wounds. These are your wounds. As you can see, there's a, you only have three hit points or three wounds. And on the fourth, you go to, like, incapacitation and, and uh, rolls that uh, could be detrimental to your character, and you could actually die as well. Fatigue uh, is another uh, way that your character is hindranced with negative modifiers and that fatigue is usually from like drowning and stuff like that uh advances this is your character's level and uh, as you can see uh you can have up to 20 foot well you can have up to 25 levels in savage worlds there's a uh, four tiers with five uh in each tier so you can go to novice and then journeyman then expert and then is it there's the last one legendary Josh, I think is it legendary? The um, last tier, could be. I think it is. I don't. I don't, I don't think I've ever gotten that far. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've the highest I've got is like towards the end of Journeyman, so probably about uh, probably nine or so uh, for ranks. Uh, and then you know, as you advance, you get more, you know, more edges. You can you know up your skills. You can choose new skills. You can raise an attribute die every single rank or well, every single tier, not every rank. But uh, yeah, you can do stuff like that. Uh, also, here's all your skills. Your skills are everything to you. So, you know, you got your athletics, common, notice, persuasion, stealth. There's a lot of other skills as well in the skill sidebar button. I mean, there are a bunch. They're all attribute related. And like I said, there's only five, five attributes. And I would recommend kind of not pouring all of your points into one one ability, uh, well, one attribute, because there are very important skills. You know, spirit has to do with being shaken. Vigor has to do with soaking wounds. You know, your strength has to do with uh, your damage for melee weapons. Your agility is to hit and damage, I think, with uh, ranged weapons. And your smarts is like magic and knowledge and stuff. So I would kind of recommend to spread them out because I've seen people in the past put everything into agility and just fire a bow all day. And then when they take damage, they have a D4 spirit so they can never shake. They can never get rid of shaken. So they always have to use bennies or they can't soak any wounds. And then they end up usually dying on that character. So, but yeah, that's just a little, eh, little you know, piece of advice. Uh, your your attacks uh, on the next tab will have all of your weapons, your you know guns or whatever that you have. Bats. I mean, you can have a bat with nails in it. So Savage Worlds is very flexible. The Suede Rulebook has tons and tons of weapons. Plus, all of the settings they have all kinds of uh, weapons as well, and it's all automated as well. So damage is automated. Uh, it tells you you get so many wounds and, and, and all that stuff. So that's the uh, that's that tab there. So that's for combat. Powers is where you're going to go. Magic, you need to select an arcane background. And usually the rule sets will add more as well. Uh, what is it called? Mad Scientist in... Is it Mad Scientist for Deadlands, Josh, I think? Weird science. Weird science. That's it. Yeah. Oh, there it is. It's already on there. Duh, it's right there. There's an option in the drop down box. And then, uh, then you would add your spells and stuff like that. And a lot of, uh, a lot of things have changed in Savage Worlds Adventure Edition for magic. You can spend more power points to, you know, add more damage to your spells, change things, add different elements to your spells and stuff as well. It's all in the Suede Rulebook. Uh, and then uh, the next tab is the inventory tab. You can add uh, items here. So we'll go into the items. Uh, we'll say, okay, here's an ax. I'm gonna add the ax, just drag and drop it on there. Oh, gotta go to the tabs. The one thing that I forgot, uh, you need to select the appropriate tab to put the appropriate item onto 
the sheet. So as you can see, I, I added an axe on there. So the damage is my strength score, which is a D4 plus a D6. So I'll roll both die. And then when you go back to your combat tab, there you go. It added your, your axe. So I would just roll the D4. Hopefully I would, ha I would have a better strength score that would raise that die. And all that is under, uh, under the, the underlying code of the character sheet, all that is automated. So once you update your, you know, your different attribute scores, that will also change uh, on your uh, combat tab as well. So, but it's just like all the other rule sets uh, that, are, that have a lot of automation, your attacks are in there, there's your damage. So yeah, there you go. And then last but not least, uh, your notes, just like on every other character sheet from the other rule sets, you just put in your background story, etc. So, but that is the character sheet, which uh, has actually quite a lot of uh, automation. And like I said, Aki's done over the last several years. He's been working on this on the uh, deluxe and suede rule sets. He's done a a great job with uh, automation, especially with like the edges. I, I believe the edges add automation now. If something adds plus to this or plus to that to a skill, it will do that for you. So, so you, what do you guys uh, think about suede so far? Do you guys have any questions or or anything like that? Looks like everything you need, nothing you don't. Yeah, yeah, it's really nice. Especially, uh, have you guys added any kind of weapons or anything like that to your your character sheet yet? I just threw an axe in there just because. Nice to, fo to follow along with you there. All right, so I'm going to add a couple of zombies to the combat tracker. And I'm going to also add a map. So I'm going to go into my assets. And I'm, I, I, yeah, I, I think it's good to do this kind of setting it up on the go so the, you know, the users can see actually how easy it is to set up an encounter. So, I mean, I've already added some zombies to the combat tracker, so we're good to go. Uh, here is uh, my War of the Dead map pack. So let's get into my images. I guess I need to add an A in there. So there we go, there's my War of the Dead map pack. I just choose the map that I want, which will be something, ah, oh, there you go, with a bunch of cars and stuff. So I'll select this map. I'll create a, an image, there we go. I've got my map ready to go. Uh, if it doesn't have a grid, I can easily add a grid as well. And what I'll do is I'll just kind of open this up real quick. I'll zoom in. And then I'll add a map. I'll say that the, let's see. I'll add this grid here. I think I'll do, I'll do it 10 foot wide. All right, there we go, one square wide. So there we go. I'm gonna share this with my players. There we go. You guys should have the, the street map with the crashed cars mm -hmm. on it. And we will go ahead and put, we'll say that you guys are, are coming from south to north. And I'll put you guys on the uh, sheet. Manly Hands. <laughs> Such a great name. Uh, Manly, Manly, do you want to add a, uh, a portrait really quick so we can see on the map? And then I'm also going to do a token really quick. We're going to say that uh, I'm going to make sure the tokens selected up top of the assets. And I'm just going to type in zombie. And there are a bunch of zombie tokens that are going to show up. Here we go. So I'm going to, I like this big, big fat hulking zombie. And I'm going to go ahead and put these uh, tokens on there. And then I'm going to take these zombies and drag and drop them on to the map. There we go. So all three zombies have been added. I'm going to make them visible to the players. And now in just what a minute or so I've created an encounter. So it makes it a uh, super, super, super easy. Uh, yeah. To generate an encounter. So, all right. So it looks like, uh, I'm going to add, um, um, portrait on for manly really quick 
I have a portrait. Oh, you Seriously. do have a portrait? Oh, sorry, it didn't show oh, up on my end. Can you change it again? Maybe it'll just overwrite the one that I have on there. Sorry about oh, that. Oh, that's, that's fine. I'll take that one. I was going to do another one, but I'm like, eh, I don't think I'll like that one. So, all right, so we have uh, our, our party here. They're survivors of the of the modern-day apocalypse. Either there's been a, uh, a rabid disease that's just destroyed everything, and everything and now it seems like this disease has started to turn the dead into the undead giving them another look on life or maybe Jeez, Dave read the room man so yeah <laughs> so you guys uh, we'll, we'll say that uh, we're going to go to initiative and the, the uh, one of the cool things about Savage Worlds is it doesn't use a d20 for initiative or any other dice it uses a deck of cards and uh, getting a joker is the best all the way to having a two as the worst. So uh, we'll just go ahead and we will create a, uh, uh, a round. So we'll go ahead and we'll roll initiative. And you should give is... us all our bennies too. Yo, oh, yeah, that's right. You guys don't have bennies? Hmm. Go right from the party sheet if we're in there. Okay, so let's see. All right, so I just rolled. Oh, look at that! One of the the shamblers got a uh, look at that got a uh, a joker. So let me let me give you guys some bennies. I'll open up your. I think you could just. I think you just open up the sheet and drag it. Or can I right click and add a benny? I thought I thought you could right click and add a benny. But there you go. You get three bennies. So on uh, on the main tab, I think on any tab it will show that you have bennies and you know like we talked about last time you can use bennies to re-roll a uh, an attack you can do it to re-roll a skill check i believe you can re-roll damage is that correct josh you can re-roll damage yeah i think you can re-roll anything uh, yeah. or you can you can also spend a benny to make the enemy re-roll too right yes you can yeah you can do that as well uh you can use a benny to get rid of the shaken effect or the shaking condition and then you can also use bennies to soak wounds so yeah but it also advertises to you know let the bennies flow because if you don't your players are just gonna save them for wounds basically and you don't want that you want them you know you want them using to reroll attacks and damage and stuff like that so always be pretty free flowing i recommend be to be free flowing with your uh your bennies as a as a game master so but uh all right so you guys have some bennies and we'll we'll start with uh <laughs> watch my first attack be like a 50 or something like that <laughs> so we're gonna take this uh this hulking zombie right here this living dead and uh let's see we're gonna make it his turn he is highlighted so we're gonna go ahead and let him move so he doesn't well he doesn't have too much of a move so i believe he has a movement of four so he's he's pretty slow so we'll let him move four four squares in fact we'll do a run all right how about we'll do a run so what i'll do is i'll just click the run button and then he can roll he can run one more extra square so he's basically moaning and shambling his way towards all of you. So that's pretty much all he can do. And we'll go to Brightwing Chuck. What, what would you like to do? Because you have a king. So, and then it just descends from there. All right. I guess um, I added a, a weapon. So could I fire at him? At uh, you, the living egg shambler? Yeah, you definitely can. What kind of weapon do you have? I added a AK-47. Oh, of course you had an AK-47. <laughs> well, I had a Gatling gun, but it was too heavy. <laughs> Didn't it give you the encumbrances of? I could see, I could see old Brightwing Chuck just pulling a Gatling gun around. You know, oh my goodness, that's so good. So yeah, well, I, I believe that the, I think there's some special. Uh, rules to go with the AK-47 so uh, I believe it has a multi-shot or something like that 
yeah. but f for this. Uh, so what doesn't multi shot give it give you plus two to hit for firing off a burst of rounds? And I think it's like what three rounds. It costs you three rounds or something like that. So you go from thirty rounds to twenty seven, and you would get a plus two to attack, or is it? I don't know. I'd ha I'd have to look that up. So. I believe it's a, that the rate of fire uh, is how many times that you can actually. It, it's like you if if you have a rate of t fire of three, which I think it has, mm -hmm. uh, you get to do yeah. three different attacks on three different enemies, uh, and then there's more ammo than just three bullets used. Though uh, I don't remember exactly how many bullets are used. Yeah, I remember reading that it was like three at a time you would use for like a an automatic weapon or something like that. So yeah, but you can I think fire would... just one shot if you want. Yeah, you can do that. So let, let's let say uh, you do fire a shot at the zombie. And you, let's go ahead and just, uh, in fact, why don't we boost up old Brightwing's uh, attributes a little bit? We'll say that you have a, a D8 in agility. All right. Let's uh, take, I think you can just take the D8 die and drag it onto the D4 for agility. Okay. And, and why you don't you, all of you guys do that? Shooting skill. Yeah, and you have to have shooting as well, So, which he does have shooting. So there you go. So why don't you also drag a D8 over to your shooting as well and drag it on top of that? All right, very cool. And then why don't you put like a D8 on Spirit and Vigor as well? And why don't all of you guys do that? Just kind of raise your attributes a little bit. But it, it, I mean, seriously, Aki's made it that easy to where all you have to do is just drag and drop a new die onto the sheet and voila, you know, your skills have been, you know, adjusted. So why don't you make sure you do that with a couple skills on the right hand side, put a D8 or D10 or whatever you want. So let's go ahead uh, now and we'll shoot at that living dead. Just take your shooting skill and drop it right on a token, just like you would if you're playing D&D &D or Pathfinder or any other any of the other automated rule sets so i targeted him control clicked on uh let me mm -hmm. shambler and then mm -hmm. just double click on shooting yeah you can double click on shooting and voila so wow you had a critical failure and that I is that uh, penny. yeah you can re <laughs> spend one of those bennies to get a reroll <laughs> all right so what would i get so a benny if I didn't use a Benny, what's a critical fail? Does that do anything or? Depends on the situation, but I think that your gun would jam because on a critical failure, the, the DM is supposed to jump in and make something bad happen for you. So I would say it, it, it goes off, click, click, click. But then all of a sudden you're like banging on a, you know, but I, you know, to bang on your guns because it's jammed but but then again i don't even think on a critical i don't think you can use a benny if someone, i'm not mistaken someone in chat said that they don't think you can re-roll when it's a crit critical failure yeah. i don't i, I think that that's george true. I think that yeah you can't yeah I, I remember i remember something about that so yeah we would say that your gun is just jammed and you're just trying to unjam it and you'll be ready to go next round so yeah and then you can also you can also take move up to your movements as well so what uh, what a, what a great way to start brightwing i mean you, you jam your gun on the first pull of the trigger i'm gonna i'm gonna go hide behind manly hands because <laughs> why simply because he has manly hands <laughs> oh my big hands i'm trying to <laughs> That's oh, it. that's too good. So we'll go to the next round and we'll go to the, the next living dead. So uh, this thing is going to shamble. Let's see. One, two, ooh, three, four. It's going to get to attack Skippy McDougal. And it's going to it's going to try to bite you. It's going to try to grab on to you, Skippy. Ah, and try to sink its choppers into you. And that is versus your parry, and it's a miss. Now, you'll notice there is a difference between... You're called a wild card, if I'm not mistaken. You're called a wild card. So you'll notice when you rolled your attack, uh, Joe, you rolled two die. You rolled the D8 
for your agility and a uh, yeah, a D8 for the shooting. No, I'm sorry. A D8 for the shooting and then an extra D6, which is called the wild die. And you just get that as being a wild card or a player. So it's like a it's like a get out of jail free extra roll. You know what I mean? For attacks. And that's for skill checks and everything. Now, you'll notice that this zombie, the living dead, it only rolled the D4 because that's all it has for a bite skill. It didn't get the extra, you know, you can see on the combat tracker, you have that Savage Worlds logo to the left of your name. It's highlighted. Now I can go into the, I should be able to go into the character sheet or the combat tracker and then make this thing, just kind of click on it and make it. Uh, but anyway, I can make it. And then if I make it a, a wild card, that would be like an, an elite creature because it would get the extra D6. So, but there's that's the difference in Savage Worlds between you being a wild card and just these regular zombies. They're just, you know, mooks or cannon fodder or whatever you want to call them. But there are creatures that are wild cards also that do get three wounds before they die. Now, for these regular zombies, you just you kill them and they're dead. They take one wound and they're pretty much dead, basically. So that's how it works in, in Savage uh, Worlds. So, but there's really not a lot, honestly, uh, with this. So, but anyway, this living dead, it shambles towards you, Skippy, and it slashes that. Well, actually, it slashes you, grabs you, and tries to bite you, and nothing happens. You, you basically just push it away. So, Skippy, it is your turn now. Right. Skippy McDougal. Great name. I'm going to use my laser sword. <laughs> He's got a laser sword. I love now, it. it. It is similar to, but legally distinct from, a lightsaber. Did you, modif sword. did you modify one of those toy lightsabers maybe before the apocalypse happened? Maybe Absolutely. you're some type of scientist or something? Yeah indeed nice yep. so yeah let's see on your uh let's see on the combat tab you've got your laser sword and let's see what do you have for uh, abilities let's go to your traits and stuff you've got uh let's add a let's add a d8 onto your strength also because that would have to do with uh your uh skills so let's go to Let's add fighting onto your character sheet. I'll add that on you really quick uh, for you. So you can see fighting just appeared. Now I'll take a D8 and drop that on the fighting as well because fighting is like melee weapons and stuff like that. So, okay, so now you're good to go. And on your combat tab, you'll see that your laser sword has a D8 on the left for your attack. So seeing that you are a wild card, you will roll the D8 and the D6. So you get like a free a free die every single roll, which is really cool with Savage Worlds. And then you can just drag and drop it on the zombie. You can target it and use the combat tracker. Okay, so yeah, look at that. So you'll notice in the, ch uh, the chat, you hit because the parry is a two. So you also rolled four higher than that. So if it would have been a six or higher, that's with a raise. So now your damage for your sword, it has a armor penetrating of 12. Look at that, Josh, the laser sword. So you're gonna roll a, uh, it looks like a D8 and then your for your strength and then the D6 for the actual sword itself. And now that you got a raise, you're gonna be adding an additional D6 for the for the raise. So that's like a crit. Basically a, a raise is a crit in Savage Worlds. And that's four above the target number. So parry, if it's melee, or if you're doing a skill check or a ranged attack, the DC is just four. So now you can go ahead and roll your damage. And now you'll see, you know, a bunch of die. And if any of them max out, they'll just keep throwing out more die and adding up the total damage. So it looks like there's your raised die. So you didn't have any. Ma so look at that. Yeah, you, it, this thing took three wounds. And this this is just basically dead. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and apply that. It basically just kills it. 
and you can see that there is uh, incapacitated on the on the token itself you can see the inc now this is cool i wonder if this carried over to unity but this this zombie if i delete the token it should put a blood splatter on the map does it still do that in unity josh it does oh that is awesome so now all i have to do is find the living dead that we just killed and uh yeah so here it is right here I'm going to delete the combatant and splat. There is a blood splat on the map. I wish all the other rule sets would do that too. Wouldn't that be cool? But there you go. All right, so Skippy McDougal, that's good. Uh, you didn't take any movement, so feel free to take movement. And then we'll go to Manly. Oh, Manly Hands. <laughs> right. Every, everybody's behind behind the Manly Hands. That's okay. Uh, I'm gonna shoot uh, this uh, shambler that's uh, over by the the, uh, the cars. The one that uh, shambler two went. Uh, I, I do like these hand drawn maps for the War of the Dead. All right, so your target. See, it says target four. You're a hit. Ooh, and he rolled a six, so it rolled a four. So he takes that, adds a four onto the six for a total of 14. That takes two wounds as well. And I will apply that in the combat tracker, and it is dead. And another blood splatter appears on the map up by the car. I approve your movement, Josh. So what we're going to do, seeing that this is the end of the combat round, we're going to go again. Now, you're going to notice that in Savage Worlds, every single round you draw new cards for initiative so it's not like pathfinder it's not like you know D, &D where it's the same numbers unless you you know you delay or hold or whatever so here we go we're gonna go to the next round and look at that manly hands you get to go first this time with an ace nice i'm gonna shoot the nice other cards one. yeah dc of four there you go. You rolled a four, and it's and you rolled it with the wild die too. So the wild die saved you that time. And did you guys see how he rolled a max on one of the sixes, and it just re-rolled, and he took seven. He took eleven damage. So I'll apply that, and the last shambler hits the ground as a little puff of like a dust or like a poisonous type of sporous cloud pops up from the zombie so you guys are now out of combat and uh, just the whole field is littered with broken down cars and all kinds of crates that say acme or boxes of lays potato chips laying all over even twinkies there's a box of twinkies on the ground yeah. what and that's you know that's that's basically how savage worlds works i mean it's so easy to to play it's You'll notice in Savage Worlds, the one thing that I do like about Savage Worlds is there, it, you may feel the same way, Josh, but there's no hiding behind massive armor classes in the D20 games, like your 22s and plus, you know, plus armor classes. You know, the target number is four in Savage Worlds. That's an easy number to hit for ranged. You know, and then there's variables. There's plus two and pl minus two bonuses and stuff. And, you know, it's like I said, when you attacked versus that parry with your laser sword, that parry was two. Like I mentioned, parries are usually lower than, you know, a ranged attack. So, and it goes the, you know, it goes the other way as well. I mean, it, it's easy to hit you as well, but it's a little bit harder because of the monsters don't have the extra D6 wild die like you guys get. And, you know, with your last attack, Manly, your wild die saved you because your primary die missed and your wild die hit. So that's, yeah, that's good. That's what I, I really like about Savage Worlds. And like I said, and my players have mentioned this to me, this is a relentless game. I mean, it can, it can really, the crap can hit the fan really quick in this game. I mean, especially if you got a zombie that just got a raise on you. And now it's, you know, rolling a strength, a six and a six, 
you could be in trouble, especially I've I've seen in my zombie apocalypse games that I've ran, I've had a couple people take 40 and 50 damage because they just keep the, you know, the NPC just kept, you know, exploding the, the die and those D4s and 6s just keep rolling out. And when that's happening, all you can say is it was nice knowing you. <laughs> that's pretty much it. You know, unless you can, unless you can get lucky and soak a bunch of wounds at one time. So, do you have like a behemoth zombie to throw in there? Uh, we could, yeah, I could, I could find something really quick. I'll look at the NPCs and we'll see what type of, uh, we'll see what kind of wild eyes we have on there. Let's see. Yeah, here's one. Let me throw a token on it really quick. I think you'll I think you'll like this creature. And this was just the first uh you know wild this is just the first one that came up, so let's see. I'm gonna go into my tokens. In fact, I'm gonna go to the top. What's what's Skippy and Manly Hand's uh, pace? I need to make sure mine's is higher than yours. Just in case I need to run. <laughs> <laughs> Skippy's pace is six. All right, so here we go. Here's a. Uh a cool token so we'll, we'll say that uh this this dragon just kind of you know flew out of the sky and uh there we go now uh, we'll see we'll see how a i'll show you guys how the wild uh we'll go ahead and we'll let's let's re-roll again so all right oh look at that is that tiamat <laughs> that is tiamat that is the tiamat <laughs> token yeah that is the tiamat token from devon knight so okay so this this creature is a wild card it also gets uh, a d6 added in there uh it has uh all kinds of great uh, abilities we'll go ahead and we'll say that uh it does a melee attack we'll say that it comes right on down here to bright uh bright wing chuck and we will do a claw attack on you so that is a uh, wow that's barely a hit with a three wow and that was with the and you can see his d6 the wild die that actually hit so now let's go ahead and use his damage which is uh that's a pretty pretty good amount of damage rolled but i mean those aren't really too too good of rolls but as you can see you took you just took 14 wounds worth of damage so uh now i'm gonna have to refresh myself on how we do uh soak so i'm you're shaken and you have two wounds so you need to do a a check for wounds and what is that done josh is that is that done on the combat tracker or is that just done off your character sheet i can't remember um, when you're yeah, trying to soak wounds I'm not sure if it's still the same with the rule set change that's just happened, but you used to be able to drag your Benny uh, onto the combat tracker, onto the actual wound itself, uh, and it would automatically try to soak it for you. Okay, uh, yeah. But it, it, may, it may have changed in recent time. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, you can also just do it manually if you decide. If he wants to soak him, he just spends a Benny and, and can try. Yeah. Okay, so he, oh, look at, look at that. He's got aces going. Oh my goodness, look at that. Dude, you just soaked like three wounds worth, right? Yeah. Yeah, because you got a four, you got an eight, four successful, an eight and a 12. So you would have soaked those wounds, no problem. So let's see if it, uh, if I did apply you, it. Did you, did you drag it right onto there, Joe? Did... I dragged uh, Benny onto the combat tracker into my character. Okay, yeah, because it's not showing that you have any wounds at all. So I believe that we have done. I know it does. It shows you have two wounds, but I'll get rid of those off of your character sheet. So. But you are still shaken. But you just yes. have no wounds. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's uh. So even though it had aces, it doesn't get rid of shaken. It just gets rid of the wounds. I I believe so. 
I could be wrong. We can look mm. it up. Oh, we can. Yeah, we can. We can check that out. Uh, we're kind of actually we're kind of running out of time now. So, well, actually, no, we got a little while to go. So, it's not Friday. If yeah, if you wanna, if you wanna look that up really quick, Josh, we'll. Uh, yeah. I thought I got rid of it because I always get. Maybe I was doing it wrong for all this time. <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm not. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. Maybe even chat will know. Uh, I don't have it up and running, so I can't see it. But. Yeah. So it looks like Lore Master says that if you soak all the wounds, remove shaken. I think if you okay. only soak one wound, then you would still be shaken. But seeing that you got rid of both wounds, it also gets rid of shaken. Uh, if Lore Master, if you could confirm that for me in chat. So, yeah, that's nice. You have no wounds at all, man. That's pretty awesome. So I'm wondering if... Uh, so the first time you attacked, it put the damage and things on me. And then I dragged the soak onto my character. And then you attacked. And then it seemed like the soak worked. Is that possible? Mm, you, you don't soak until after you have the wounds on you. Okay. But I would I would put it in the combat tracker because you can you know if you open up your your combat tracker you could see hey you know it did two wounds to me, and then like Josh said you just take the token out of your little tray on your sheet and then just dump it onto the wound the blood drop in the combat tracker that said two, that's why we'll we'll do it again so let's go to uh uh we'll go to Brightwing Chuck now so that is a, a, a shaken roll automatically so your spirit check was successful and so I can yeah the, the shaken can now come off of you so yeah it, it, you it's an true if you soak uh, all of the wounds then your shaken is removed as well okay but if you don't right. if you don't soak all the wounds uh, so for example if you only soaked one of the wounds and he was going to get two uh, then he would have be shaken and have one wound. Uh, uh, but because he got rid of all of his wounds and the shaken is removed. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, and, and also thank you for looking that up, Josh. Lore Master confirmed that also in chat. So, yeah. All right. So let's see. What do you want to do versus the dragon? He actually has a parry of two. No, he has a... What does the dragon have for a parry? I'll tell you some... Oh, the dragon has a seven parry, so that's going to be a little bit harder to hit. But why don't you guys, if you're fighting a dragon, why don't you guys put like D12s on your sheet for your attacks and your attribute and stuff? So let's see what the D12 fighting skill, well, a D12 agility and a D12 shooting or a D12 fighting. Let's see how you would do versus a dragon. All right, so if I just wanted to say, you know what, I just want to hit it with a warhammer. Um, yeah, just use fighting. You would have a like a D12 strength and a D12 fighting because fighting has to do with your melee hits and shooting is obviously ranged weapons. Okay, so and I agility, yeah, you would have to add fighting, yeah. And you can add that from the skill sidebar button on the right. It'll just drag and drop right onto the, the skills tab of your character sheet. All right, done. Simple enough, isn't it? Yep. Ah, look at that. So you're fighting. Uh, let's drop that over on the dragon. That would be a hit. So, yeah, you get also, yeah, and another cool thing about Savage Worlds, depending on the size of the creature, you get plus bonuses as well. So the bigger the creature, the easier it is to hit. So you got a plus, you know, you got a plus four bonus by default that's already baked into the the rule set itself so yeah plus with your bonuses you had a hit with a raise so now go ahead and use your warhammer damage and you'll get an extra d6 in there at the end thrown in there there it is there's your raise die and you do a total of uh 12 damage so it is unharmed Ooh. Yeah, okay. so but dragons are tough. They're supposed to be tough. Dragons are tough in every game. So, but yeah, that's that's gonna that's gonna happen. And I don't I don't think there's any attacks of opportunity in Savage Worlds either, is there? I don't think. It's an edge. You have to have the edge for it. Yeah, it, it's called letting your guard down or something like that. Is it? Maybe I I can't remember. But by default, no, there's no attacks of opportunity. But yeah, it's been years since I've played. But 
Yeah, this brings back so many fun memories of my zombie apocalypse game. That was a great game. So that's guys, that's how that's how combat works. I mean, it's it's pretty pretty simple. You know what I mean? There's not a lot of not a lot of math involved. There's not a lot of oh, I gotta add this proficiency and this ability score, and then I gotta add in this feat, and then I gotta add in this magical item bonus. So the numbers are super simple in Savage Worlds. I mean, it's basically it's your die type. That's all it is, plus whatever skill. So you, it's super easy. So I like it. Yeah. So what you guys you guys like it, Joe? Derek, I know you like it already, Josh. <laughs> I know I like it, but yeah, I'm I'm interested in learning more than what we've learned today. Yeah, yeah the possibilities are are practically endless, and yeah. I I haven't haven't busted into this yet. I was kind of waiting for today, <clears throat> but now I'm going to sit down and probably read it in one sitting, to be honest. Yeah, it's 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 a fun game. The first time that I I played it about. Uh, I played Savage Worlds back in Deluxe and I got the hardback from the game store. And I'm like, oh, what a Savage Worlds. And the guy's like, oh, it's a great game. It's an easy game to play. And I was like, okay, I'll check it out. And it was like, it was like 20 bucks for the hardback. And I bought it and I started reading. I'm like, wow, this is actually really good. And then I saw Fantasy Grounds had it and I was like, whoa, this is cool. And then it took care of all of the, you know, the automation for the you know i mean it it wasn't like it is now you know 10 years ago but i mean it still did your raises for you it did your all of your exploding die and i was like wow this is really cool so yeah i've played savage worlds for about 10 years now and it's i i like the system so i'm i'm definitely down for some for some suede that's for sure <clears throat> you want me to kill this dragon now yeah, you want to go ahead and kill it? Yeah, I'm gonna kill it. Manly hands. Turn, yeah, we'll we'll say manly yes. hands. All right. What did he add? He it. added something it's crazy. Gonna but... Ooh, so you uh you hit the dragon with a raise. There's his wild eye up. Not good enough. <laughs> Unarmed. Oh, yeah, why don't you guys uh you, why don't you Oh yeah, sorry about that. Why don't you do another attack and let's let's see if we can get some big rolls. I mean, you guys feel free to, you know, roll some dice on it just to see what it looks like when you just keep exploding and exploding. It's pretty cool. Raise those dice up to twelve d twelves. So let's get some, and it's great. And I also like how it calculates the size of the creature too. So which is cool. Oh, there's an exploding die. That's nice. Uh, still unharmed, huh? <laughs> D20. <laughs> I love it. Uh, All right. I don't even think you use a D20. I, I think you might for maybe a table or something. No, oh, it's shaking now. Ooh. Ooh, laser sword. Yeah, it's Ooh, got some wow. armor penetration. Yeah. Man, I want to see some aces, guys. Keep keep rolling that damage. I want I want to I want to see some aces. There, there we go. There's one. <laughs> there you go. There's some maxes. There's a twenty three. That was nice. Good thing we brought the Jedi. <laughs> yeah, I know. Tell me about it. The mad scientist with the uh, modified Hasbro. Uh, sword there's it's some pretty decent plasma dangers. all over the place i hurt myself as much as my opponent <laughs> not too bad but yeah you i mean you could literally just you know sky high damage man it's it's rare but i mean i've seen i think the highest i saw was 54 what's the highest damage you've ever seen josh I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody, <laughs> uh, bright wing Chuck. Where'd you come up with that name, dude? You always come up with crazy names. Dark just... wing Chuck. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, so, uh, this... Oh, go ahead. I think the torpedo did it. 
I, I think it did. I think the nuclear weapon, uh, I think it struck it dead on. Torpedo damage. Oh, nice. Torpedo. I think the Gatling gun worked. So George says guys, that he loves how Fantasy Grounds has the apply button. Yeah, I love that too. The apply button for wounds and stuff. Yeah, that way you can do all of your adjustments with Benny's and, and whatnot. Yeah. And fix it before you actually have to undo something. Can you guys see all the damage in the in the combat tracker for the dragon? You yeah. just see oh yeah. my goodness, that is so crazy. So what do you guys think? You think you want to play like maybe uh, Deadlands, or do you want to do like uh, Flash Gordon, or is there something else that you, interests you? Whichever one you guys, um, I guess whatever the group really wants. I like zombies. Deadlands is that what Deadlands is? Yeah. Deadlands is is the weird west. It mm -hmm. is like. Um, uh, cowboys, but uh, it's like an alternate timeline, and so there's like a lot of bizarre things. So there's undead and uh, demons, a lot of devils, weird, weird things. Yeah, yeah chupacabra, pro post civil war, stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, I, sounds... I always thought it was mostly demons and devils and stuff like that, right? Yeah, witches. There's undead. And... Yeah. And then you have, you know, it's just like the Wild West. You got to deal with. You know, other Gang. cowboys and gangs, and you know the natives if you're in their territory, and then you know then you got shamans and you got wendigos. There's all kinds of crazy stuff in in Deadlands. Chupacabras if you go south of the border. <laughs> <laughs> you got the French there. The the you know there's the 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 French are there. The English are there. There's all kinds of variables that you have to contend with sounds good to me yeah but honestly i'm up for which whichever one you want to run yeah, yeah. i'll go deadlands exactly. too deadlands would be fun yeah let's do deadlands then that sounds like a great time i'll do yeah. uh like the uh the introductory adventure or something and we'll go from awesome. there i'm gonna play sneaky pete <laughs> and so yeah we we can actually do um like a session session <laughs> session zero at some point and make characters and then uh yeah that'd be fun yeah that'll work sounds good yeah we'll we'll do the uh next week we'll we'll finish up because you know steven I, I i want steven to be here for that so but yeah. i've got a i've got an epic finale lined up for you guys so i think that will be fun and uh, then just, we'll it, take it, take a little while off. It's terrifying every time what's that what's that there more and more terrifying every time you say it. Mm, it's going to be fun. Ending. I'm thinking like if you're throwing out Tiamat on a suede sample and we're not even playing yet, I can't even imagine what you're going to do. Mm, maybe I was kind of uh, foreshadowing. Some, yeah, foreshadowing <laughs> some hindsight there. Uh -oh. oh, bright wing chuck rolling again, I think. Yeah, I just wanted to hit, a, hit it with another yeah. torpedo. Only 10 wounds. <laughs> another couple torpedoes. Fire in the hole! Yeah, I'm, I'm up for whatever. So, And I know Steven said he wanted to play some, some Savage Worlds, so I think that'll be fun. Yeah. It'll be fun to kind of jump around, you know, and play different play different games and stuff, you know. Play the... I mean, we've got 32 supported rule sets now, so... I, I think we got more than 32 now with that vice in and stuff so yeah then after that we'll play index card rpg i see rpg yeah that's yep. we got a rule set for that that's a super easy game to play super I've, easy i played it a couple easy. times yeah no i actually played it once with uh with my buddy gary and he he did a great job we did a, a sci-fi game with that that was fun what is this i've never heard of it it's called index, index card, card rpg yeah we have a rule set exactly for it. what it sounds like there you go you got to look it up in the store and add it to your account there joe and check it out it's icrp icrpg mm. Mm. so uh let's take some questions from out in the live audience so do any of you have any questions for us 
we're going to be finishing up Lost Mine of Fandelver next week. We'll probably take close to a month off, and then we'll start back up. So we'll take a little break in between each game. Have you guys noticed that you can now set any image to be your decal on your desktop? Yes. Mm. Yes, but I haven't tried it yet. Was that you, Josh? No. No, that's all John, I believe. Mm. Mm. Let's find a cool image. Oh, there we go. You just right-click, right? And set. Uh, I think you double click on it and then it'll give tell you that you can oh, set it as a background. So you have to go into your assets panel. I was going into my images yeah. sidebar button. Sorry about that. Yeah, you have to go into your assets. I wonder if we're ever going to eliminate the images sidebar button. I wonder if that's going to go to the web uh, wayside eventually. Seeing that there's really, I mean, with the assets panel, probably don't need it. Wow, so many images. Let's see. Uh... Oh, this is a cool image. Double click it. Create image. Set background detail. Look at that. An ant. Look at that. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Now we Good just job. need to go back through all the art packs for absolutely everything and make everything have a transparent background. Mm -hmm. uh, we're getting on that. Josh, can you get on that? You got enough time. Can don't you have Josh? that done by the time we're done streaming here? Would that be great? <laughs> yeah. Go, Go ahead and make that happen. 1,600 products. Yeah, we'll I'll put that. it right behind the uh, bugbear calendar that we really want to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really, you can have that out by Christmas if you could. <laughs> oh. oh, my goodness. I mean, we still haven't even gotten all of the line of sight done yet. There's still a lot of line of sight. I mean, that's just a massive, massive undertaking with yeah. 1,600 products, you know? And mm. growing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with light, yeah, with lighting coming out, uh, that's going you know, <laughs> to have to go back. and <laughs> All the devs are like, dude, you're killing me, man. <laughs> I know that's what they're saying. I just got done doing all my line of sight. Now I got to go back and do lighting. Oh, my goodness definitely looking forward to it a lot of times i forget certain people have dark vision and things like that and distance so yeah. i'm looking forward to having that yeah <clears throat> it definitely adds a huge amount of immersion into uh playing and i think that the one of the some of the cool features that are coming with it as far as like um so for example like darkness actually hides npcs as well as line of sight so if there's no light source the uh, npc even if it's within your vision uh, if it's completely shadowed, you're not going to be able to see it. So uh, there's some really cool kind of features like that. Yeah. I like how Carl has also kind of light, like a bright and dim light overrides dark vision and, you know, infra vision, stuff like that. That's that's really yeah. cool. Because, I mean, honestly, in a – and granted, I know it's a game and fantasy, but in a real-life situation, that would happen anyway. Yeah, especially sure. you take for infra, in, instance, you know, you have military – going on with night vision goggles and all of a sudden bright lights come on it throws that off so yeah that's pretty cool how he's he's really gone wild with the uh yeah he's done he's done a great job from the several times that he showed it to us it's looked really awesome i mean even that first time was like wow doug is like is it ready to go yet <laughs> and the sneak peek that doug did throughout on on youtube there yeah yeah all right all so we're gonna go ahead and call it now i uh, don't see any questions thanks everybody for hanging out with us and we'll see you guys next thursday for our epic grand finale of uh, D, D 5e lost mine of Fandelver. so thanks everybody for watching and we'll see you next week bye for now mm -hmm.